Hey everybody, it's Wednesday. I sure did miss you guys last week. Um, I didn't need the break uh, just to kind of get myself together. Um, January was such an awesome response to the presentations. I am getting tons of emails and messages from those of you that are going out and finding machines. The people in the Vintage Machine Workshop have been very busy collecting their machines and working on their machines. So um, I am regrouping from, from January. Um, and I've got a plan I want to tell you about. First of all, I want to say welcome. If you are joining us for the first time, uh, I appreciate you. Welcome. And if you're um, a repeat attendee, I also welcome you. I love spending my time with you guys. Um, if you'll do me a favor, um, we are using a new streaming system. You know, this is a lot of trial and error on our part. Uh, we've had a lot of mishaps, which just comes with technology. Um, we've learned to roll with it, but we are constantly trying to improve our process. So I have no idea how the chat is going to work in this one. If you would let me know um, if you're joining me where you're at. Uh, and I'll have a few other questions. We're building um, our programs and I do want your feedback on a few things. So if you would drop your comments in there, um, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, that helps us test out our system. Um, and I, again, I don't know what to expect. So even if I don't see your comment during the, the, uh, the live stream here, if you have questions, I will go back and answer them afterwards. Just so I don't really know what to expect. Okay, so. Um, again, I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. Um, I am so overwhelmed with all the kind emails and messages you all have sent thanking me for the content that we put out. Um, it's just been, we just didn't know what to expect. Nobody's doing what we're doing. So it's like you're going into the unknown and you guys are meeting us there and it just makes my day. Um, we are going to do a slight change in format partially because I feel like there's a better way for me to present information to you rather than just spending so much time building up and requiring us to spend over. I know I can talk forever. So some of our presentations in January were well over an hour. And uh, I think that I'm going to take my material. I have so many free value things planned for you guys. I'm going to break them up into a couple times a week instead. So I'm going to try and keep those live. It'll still be live. I'm still going to keep it to try to between five and 10 minutes at most, but I just really want to get some value to you guys. Um, I don't really have a plan yet. I'm going to aim for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at one o'clock still. So some weeks it may be two, some weeks it may be three, but I will always post and let you know what the plan is. Uh, and then I also, we've been kicking around another idea that we've not tried yet. Um, we're thinking about doing um, some social time that is, I, it could be machine related, but a lot of us are just tired of being, I, I work solo. You're, you, the space I'm in, you see me, other than getting on with you guys, I really don't have an outlet to the world these days. Um, so some people had suggested maybe we could try a social time where we could um, get together virtually and we can do it one of two ways. We could do it on Zoom where um, we're all able to talk to each other, which means we wouldn't be able to do any sewing machine um, in the background or anything, but we could also do it um, just like we're doing here where I'm primarily talking to you and answering questions and you guys are answering in the chat. You could be sewing along or if you're in one of the workshops and cleaning a machine. So I'm going to do a few posts on that and, and maybe do a poll and we'll just play around. But if anybody would like to join me from social time, I'm happy to have company while I'm in here cleaning machines uh, seven days a week. So we're going to kick that down around a little bit too and just see what we can do. Uh, and I also have a few other guests that we're going to bring on. I've been building a nice network. I'm, you know, really versed in guilds in our area. There's so many talented people out there whose work I want to promote, not in a salesperson kind of way. I don't do affiliates or anything. But when there's really good people that are teaching really, really, really good um, things, skills like, uh, you know, free motion quilting. We've got uh, people that do um uh, applique. I know people all over the universe and I would love to have them on as guests to be able to teach you a few things too. So we're really trying to go down the road of um, getting you some information. Okay, so if you're joining me and you don't know who I am, I am Andy Barney, and I own a, um, a service, a professional service uh, repair and restoration shop in Cumming, Georgia. I've been doing this for um, over 13 years now. My learning curve was very steep because I did not have any. I had one or two nice people that would help me when they had time, um, but my whole goal of Sewing Doc Academy is to shorten the learning curve for all of you and to offer you things that no one on earth has offered you yet. Uh, it's all about maintaining your own machines, but as you're going to see in my presentation, there are so many more of you than we expected that want to go down a career path, and I'm excited for that. So that's primarily what I do. 
Um, what I'm going to talk about today is the thing I'm getting most emailed about right now and message, which is, okay, so you're going to teach us how to do things with machines, but what's your timeline? Like, what are we looking at? And so there are so many questions and I'm hoping I can bring some more answers for you today. So let me go ahead and get right into that. Um, I don't think we'll be at an hour today. Like I said, I know I have a tendency to talk and talk because it's machines and that's my love. So um, I do have a handout for you at the end. And I also have, I'm going to also include in the handout the, um, the slides presentation that I'm doing here. That way you have, now my handout has a lot of the information, but if you ever want to go back and refer to these slides, um, then they'll be there. So give me just a second to get this all set up. I think we're good. Um, I'm trying to avoid any mishaps like we've had before. <laughs> all right. So this is um, covering our workshops that are coming in 2022 and beyond. And I say beyond, um, I'm doing my best to estimate how this will roll out, but it takes an incredible amount of time and manpower to do everything behind the scenes. And I hate to make false promises and fall short. Um, so this is kind of my estimate. First of all, for anybody new asking, what is Sewing Doc Academy? Uh, my little what they call an elevator statement when somebody asks you, this is my quick response, which is I empower you by guiding you in maintenance, service, repair, and troubleshooting of sewing machines. That's very broad, but that's really the understanding of what we're trying to build here. If you've ever been to the website, you'll see this little block that's on there. This is really the heart of what I do. Um, obviously, I have to make an in, you know a living uh, and and feed my family, but really what we're doing is trying to shift an entire paradigm um, of what we experience in this country. I don't think it's necessarily wrong. I just think that any of us that sew, especially if you um, invest in a lot of machines or you sew for a living, we're not getting a really good return on investment. Um, dealers really want to keep you. And I'm not saying all dealers are bad. I have so many nice dealers in my network that I adore, but their business model is to sell you new machines. And a lot of people, my customers, most of them don't want to keep investing in machines. And so learning what's wrong with them when you take them in for service is a problem. Before I was servicing machines, I had to take my machine in for service. And I can't tell you how many times it came back with no explanation of um, of what was wrong with it or was there anything wrong with it? Did it just need service? So I'm trying to put the control back in our hands rather than keeping it in someone else's hands. I do use the word empower a lot and I maybe too much, but it's really important to me for you to feel empowered. Um, I know it's just a sewing machine, but all of you that sew, I feel like if I get customers that come in that sew once in a blue moon and like have had that sewing machine for 20 years and haven't used it in 15 and they want to use it, they're like, I don't understand how there's still service places. But if you use your machine frequently, you know that there's a need for service and repair and maintenance. And so much of that would be better served in your hands. So I do empower you to feel comfortable having a better relationship with your sewing machine, even outside of maintenance. So empower is definitely my word. So who is Sewing Doc Academy for? I have two main camps of people. One is those that want to learn to take care of their own machines. So that saves you time and money, which means you might, let's just say you bought, you know, a, a Viking Opal three years ago. You should have your machine serviced every year, especially when it has a computer in it. It's not just about the mechanics of the machine, but especially when you have a computer in it, um, it needs to be lint free. You need That's what extends the life. Um, not all dealers will tell you a timeline on when you should have it serviced because their money's made on you wearing down that machine and replacing it. So we have the people that want to just take care of their machines. I have a lot of customers that live out in the middle of nowhere with no access to service. So this is really important. The second camp is um, those that want to build a side business. Uh, retirement income is becoming very popular. Some people want to open a shop and some people want to build skills for a career. There is currently no true school or vocational program that does this. Um, there's a handful of retired gentlemen that have done this mostly in the, there's a couple of people in the featherweight community. There's a few people in the vintage machine community. And then there's one or two that try to do um, modern machines. And there's, a, I, we're going to go over that in a little bit, but really there's just, there's, everybody assumes that there's a college or a community college or a vocational program, but there aren't any. So our reach goal in 10 to 15 years is to hope that we can get us to a point that we can be recognized as a vocational school, which will open up a whole lot of programs. So I, I have big aspirations, but for now, I really just want to 
teach people uh, my skill and knowledge. Now, what I'm discovering very, very quickly and makes me very excited is the people that start in the first camp are actually moving into the second camp. Um, we've only released on this path so far the Vintage Machine Workshop, and that's because that's the basis of all professional learning going forward. Everything that you learn in the Vintage Machine Workshop is extremely vital to the things going forward. And I think people come in with some intimidation. You know, how many of us have been told, don't even touch the tension dial. Don't do this. Don't do that. So we kind of have to reverse our mental wiring of like taking the covers off a machine is dangerous, which it can be. But people are understanding the satisfaction of getting in there and cleaning a machine yourself. Um, I have a number of people come into the workshop very timid and afraid to dig in. And then once they get in and look at it, like, oh, it's really not that bad. So I think the interest is like, oh, I can do this for myself. But then you start loving it and you can only collect so many machines before you're um, a fire hazard in your house like me. Um, and you and you then you realize you can just keep doing this, but you can do it for other people and charge for it. So I feel like there is a migration from camp one to camp two for a lot of people. Um, and so we're, we're definitely moving towards addressing that a lot. And you'll see a lot of that in this presentation. So first we have um, I want to talk to you about how we learn these skills. This is what we have experimented with in the past. We started with in-person classes back in 2017, and we were doing the featherweight workshop, the vintage machine workshop, and what we call remove your covers. All of those were only taught in person. The pros to doing in person, of course, is it's real time and you have live guidance. So you'd have a group of eight to 12 people sitting at a table and someone would raise their hand to be like, hey, can is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And I can in live time say, yes, that's exactly what you need to do. Um, another pro was that you learn from others in the room. So you would have the person sitting next to you and the person across from you, all with different machines. So they're gonna ask questions and you're gonna learn from their experience and vice versa. Um, we also had the feeling of community. I know we all miss the social aspect of our classes. This is one thing that I feel like we're recapturing with what we're doing, but just being in a room full of people doing the same thing. Cleaning machines is very, very social because there's not a whole lot of speaking through the whole thing. And then um, now we did have some downsides, which everything does. Um, you only had a few short hours to learn everything. So if you showed up to the Vintage Machine Workshop, there would be, you know, eight to 12 people in there. And it was about four to six hours. So you're cramming everything that I'm teaching you into six hours worth of workshop. And if you're anything like me, that brain dumps stuff so fast. There was such a pressure to feel like you had to grasp it all in the moment. But also there was no guidance after class. So just like any other class like that you take, you absorb it all in one day, you get your handouts and your material and you leave. What we found was that um, that there was analysis paralysis. So the next time that someone went to pull out their machine to service it or to maintain it, to clean it and lubricate it, it would be like, OK, well, what if I've forgotten what to do and what if I mess up my machine? Um, so that was one thing we took note of. Um, you would also potentially have to travel. Um, when you're doing in-person classes, you can only reach your local area or people have to pay travel and airfare um, hotel to come to you. And then there was also higher class fees because when you're teaching um, in person, there's a lot more resources that are used. We have to rent the space. Um, so we took all those into consideration. And then just before COVID, we started to test on-demand classes only. So we did this with the Featherweight Workshop and we started to do it with the Vintage Machine Workshop. The pros to this is there's no travel, obviously. You just log in and all your information is there. Um, you saved fees because um, you're paying for the classes you need to go. And you learn at your own pace. So you're not cramming everything into those couple of hours. Um, you also always have the material to refer to. So the same format we have now, you have all of your on-demand core lessons. That was built from this concept. So you always have those core lessons to go back to. Now, the downside to this, of course, is that you had no live guidance. Um, we always have a little comment section where you could um, ask your questions and I'll come back through and give you pictures, tell you what to do, you know, put a quick video in there. Um, but you didn't have someone that you could ask, like raise your hand and literally ask a question. Also, it's solitary and you're the only one sitting at your kitchen table doing this and it's kind of lonely and there was no connection or community. The thing I missed most about the in-person classes is that one person would ask a question that someone else had never thought to ask and it would open up a whole new world for them. And so we're trying to recapture a lot of that in what we're doing. 
So this is the method that we've come up with that combines these two into the same world. We do what we call virtual instructor-led workshops, which is just a fancy word for saying it's a combination of the on-demand material and our live workshops. So our on-demand learning library is what we call our core lessons. That's included in every single workshop. So for instance, in the Vintage Machine Workshop, um, the bulk of the learning is done in there. And then we do monthly events where if you need clarification or have a special situation, then we address those live. Um, you, all, you learn at your own pace and on your own schedule. This has been very vital, especially for the students in this class that already have a full-time job and can't leave that job. Um, you're able to do your weekends, evenings, whatever your schedule is, it's possible. Even with our live workshops, we record everything so that if you missed it, you can still come back in and view it. There is no travel, which is the best thing right now because I'm terrified to travel or deal with an airport or anything like that. Uh, we've designed our entire path to pay as you go. So you're not investing into this big gigantic program all at once, which can be thousands of dollars. So we're, we're setting it up intentionally for you to pay as you go and also to start earning income as you go if you're interested in, in this as a career. And then we have monthly live sessions with the instructor. We do Q and A's, we do um, weekend classes right now, and we're always adding new things as we need them. And then we have a private community for learning, sharing, building friendships. It's really nice seeing the Vintage Machine Workshop come together. There's a lot of friendships being built in there as we get to know each other. So that's kind of the basis of our workshops. So, oh, and also we have support with new challenges. Like I said, we always have assistance. If you get stuck on something, you're not going to be left handling it alone. Now, we do have challenges on our side. There is a reason no one has ever attempted to do what we are doing with Sewing Doc Academy. Um, there is no official school or training program, so we are having to build everything solely based on our experience or my experience. Um, there's a crossroads between you know, technology and the knowledge part of it. If you, there's so many technicians that are usually in their 60s or 70s that have all the knowledge, but don't have the know-how to make this part happen. Um, and I do feel like it takes a little bit of bravery to do this because you've seen how many uh, technical mishaps we've had. Things happen and we just have to deal with them. Um, but no one is considering doing this because of the challenges. The amount of work that goes into the back end is just overwhelming. So I don't. I hope that we paved the path on this. Um, we're doing it with all your help. So your your patience with our mishaps is appreciated. Um, but our approach to our path, which is what I want to get into. Um, we do build out the on-demand library. So I spend weeks or months, or in some cases, it's been more than a year of recording all of this material and breaking it down into consumable pieces for you. So it's walking you through all of the same procedures we use to handle whatever um, I'm teaching, whether it's vintage machine workshop or troubleshooting or sergers, all of it is exactly the same procedures that we use. And I break them down to make it manageable for you. Um, then we launch the workshop with what we call founding members. And that means that the very first people that invest into that workshop get a much reduced rate into the workshop. And there's always tons of bonuses and the bonuses come up as we build things. Um, so we, we take the bones and then with the feedback we get from you, but also the things we teach in there become part of the workshop. So I feel like the more value that you help me with to build future workshops or improve, I like to give back to you tenfold. That's just the way I work. I don't want to use you to keep building my workshops, but I want you to be a part of the process because your experience is the most valuable part of our workshops. So we keep adding value and lessons to the workshop. Um, the thing is, is I could be building any one of these workshops for the next 20 years and they will still never be complete because machines are that complex. So we try to take and build the bones and then all of you add your your struggles and your issues and that just keeps building the workshop shop out in value so here's our path um, we call it a workshop path it's the order in which we are building and releasing workshops um, this is very very specifically designed it's something i've been pondering for probably five years now and it's specifically designed for you to focus and learn skills in a specific order um, especially for those of you that are looking on a career path, um, it's very important. I wish that I would have had some kind of guide like this when I was going through my learning um, stages. So you can begin building a small side business while increasing your skills. We're already seeing this in the Vintage Machine Workshop. I have um, 
probably four or five that I know of for sure that are already um, investing into their business registration with their state and getting their credentials to build their business because um, I do teach you from the ground up how to build it without investing too much money other than in your learning and your tools and things like that. So I have it laid out in a specific way because you do need to spend time building each skill. Um, I like it this way. It's going to change someday when all these workshops are available where people are going to want to just jump in and skip over what they think is just fluff and get into the deeper workshops and realize, oh, gosh, I should have gone back and done that first because it would make more sense. So I have them spread out right now for a reason. I built this silly little graphic <laughs> to, to give us a road to follow um, for the next year. And um, we're going to start here at the Vintage Machine Workshop, which we already have going, and the Motor Service and Rewiring Workshop. Um, I do mention the Motor and Rewiring Workshop. And because as a reminder for anyone that joins the Vintage Machine Workshop before we release the Motor Workshop, you're going to get the Motor Workshop for free. That is $169 value right now. It's extremely valuable and probably one of the things I am emailed about the most. Um, there's so many sewing machines that are fine except for needing motor service and that can be a tedious process. So if you're not in, I will mention this a couple times, but our vintage machine workshop is still at the lowest price that it's going to be. It only increases in value and right now it's at $249 for our standard package. So you would be paying $249 and getting the motor workshop for free as well. All right, so let me give a quick quick overview on the vintage workshop for those of you that have not heard this before. It does cover all vintage machines with a few exceptions. Those are typically your touch and sew machines, um, anything with a nylon gear for the most part that's known to fail, um, or anything that winds the bobbin in the machine because those are a lot more complex and troublesome. Um, I have a full list on the website of what's not covered, but it's a very short list. So it's not meant to just cover one machine, it just covers the whole gamut. It focuses on cleaning, lubrication, and restoration, which are the three most common things that vintage machines need. There are a few that need some other repairs, but I would say 80 to 85% of them, this is what they need. And motor service and wiring, which is in the other workshop, um, which re releasing in March, if I did not mention that. So we have already filmed all of the modules for it. I'm just spending time editing and getting the workshop together. And Founding members, like I said, anyone that's in the Vintage Sewing Machine Workshop at this point, um, you're not considered a founding member anymore if you join right now, but you will still be enrolled into the Motor Workshop. So that's on the front page of the website. I'll give you that later. This is the starting point for anyone looking to be in the service and repair business. Even if you're dreaming of only working on the expensive modern machines, this is really the starting point. Um, and it's a really easy way to get your hands in a bunch of machines. That's what I recommend over and over and over again. You're going to feel yourself get comfortable with getting into unknown machines, which you're going to need when you're dealing with customer machines. It's still to this day, this many years into it, the hardest part sometimes is the mental game of like, you can do this, you can do this. And I, you would think that I would be at that place and I am most of the time, but you still, when you're going into the unknown, you're going to get machines you've never seen before and you need to build that confidence. So this is why I say um, it's the quickest way to build your business because you're going to want to do a lot of stuff for free and for cheap for people. So you can be charging for cleaning, lubrication and minor repairs within a few months of enrolling in the workshop if you're really, really intent on studying the material and getting some practice. Um, I'll talk about John here in a minute, but he's been in for less than two months and is already starting to branch out. So, and the best part is you will always have support and backup. So if you take in a machine and suddenly things don't seem right, you will have me and the peers in the workshop to kind of guide you through. So you're not left hanging and telling your potential customer, I don't know what to do. So that's the whole goal of how we teach. Um, most machines, again, just need, this is all they usually need. Um, that's why it's a good starting point for a smaller home business. One thing I always preach in here is just stay in your lane. This is where people really get into trouble. Your entire business is built on your reputation, either good or bad, and it is perceived. So it doesn't even have to be your true reputation. You get one bad complaint with a loud mouth customer um, that tells your their entire quilt guild, um, well, I took my machine to 
so-and-so and they told me that they serviced it, but it's still skipping stitches or what have you. You didn't, if you're in this workshop, you did not service your machine. You just lubricated and cleaned it, which is what they need. So I always tell people, do not misrepresent yourself on your skills, but people, as John will tell you, um, people will pay you to clean and maintain their, um, their, their vintage machines because that's what they need. Um, the other thing, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I forgot my other point on that, but that's really important to me that you know that. Um, and our enrollment right now, again, is still 249 on that workshop. By the time it is complete, probably at the end of the year, it will be a $600 workshop. Um, and I'm not, I'm not adding fluff to those numbers. This is just the amount of technology I have to pay for to expand these workshops, plus the amount of knowledge we put in there. Um, $600 is still a bargain for, for what we put in there. Um, this is John that I had mentioned earlier. Um, he had posted this in our private community. I did blow up the words that were important. He said, Andy was right. After finishing this cleaning course, I had enough knowledge to clean three different machines from friends at church. I figured church friends wouldn't sue me if I screw it up. And besides, it was a free service. Um, so John is taking everything he's learning in this workshop, building his confidence by asking people he knows, can I go ahead and clean your machine and lubricate it? And he did say that one of the customers apologized for how fluffy and dirty it is because she had not had it serviced. So because we have so many people moving from camp one to camp two and wanting to go down the business path, we are, um, as of this month, building a business foundation membership. And I don't even think I've told this to the Vintage Machine Workshop people yet. Um, it's for those with intentions of building a side business, retirement income, or thinking long term. Um, I feel like that there's a great need for this. You're you're going into this blind and I've been doing this forever. So we're going to guide the people in this membership to build their business and their customer base while you go through the entire path. So it helps offset your cost to invest into the workshop. It helps build your customer base and it keeps you moving in the right direction with experience. And that's those are the goals here. So um, I built my entire business with no loans, no debt, um, and with no extra money available. We're still very lean in our operation. Overhead is your number one killer. Staff would be your second killer. So we teach you to operate from your home and then gradually move into something bigger if you want, but we keep it so that you're not investing big money into building your business. And that's the only way I recommend going into this industry. This foundation membership is going to be free for those in the current Vintage Machine Workshop, but it's going to be a paid membership as soon as we get the bones built out. So I'd say within six months, it will be a paid membership if you're not in the Vintage Machine Workshop. Um, the future membership, we haven't determined what pricing looks like, but I am guessing probably in the $50 to $100 a month range as we add components. And we are working on finding a cost effective way to add a gigantic database of all the service material and manuals I have collected over the years to put them in a database for you to access with that membership. Um, we obviously teach you how to do that, but sometimes having a manual to address one specific need is really, really handy. So um, we have some technological challenges with that one, and that one's gonna be a little hard, but this is gonna be a huge membership for us to guide you in helping you build your business. All right, so let's get back on our little path here. Our next workshop is coming up next month, actually. This is the troubleshooting workshop. And I know when people hear this, I've seen it on my customers' faces, they kind of roll their eyes and are like, I know, change the needle, rethread the machine, turn it off and turn it back on. I, that's, that's not what this workshop is. I mean, it is, but it's much more than that. This is literally the exact same procedures that I use in my workshop when a customer brings a machine in and we have to figure out what's wrong with it, this is the exact procedures we need. Um, so it covers all the things that your manual should. Manuals have gotten to be so lame these days. And it really irritates me that they're starting to put them on disks and making them virtual. But um, nobody talks about these things in the manual. It's partially learning better habits. But 90% of machine issues, when they come in broken, they're either user error or they're easily resolved, which means it's not a whole complex thing. It's not like you broke a gear or broke a shaft or broke any type of component uh, or made it irreparable. But because you don't know, it's easy to assume you broke something. So this is going to resolve those issues with you out. You having to take them in for service. And it focuses on exactly what's wrong. The I know what most people do because I've done it. Um, I, we all know you have an issue. You're sewing along. It's midnight. You're trying to get something done for a birthday gift or what have you. And something goes wrong and you go to YouTube and you go to Google. Um, I'm grateful that we have those sources now, but it's hard 
because you're going to find someone that had a similar symptom to you, but probably not the same issue. So you're taking shots in the dark and it's real easy to make the problem worse. So that whole point of this workshop is two things. One, to make you have better habits and, and have a better relationship with your sewing machine. And the second is just to resolve the issue, find out if it really needs to go in for a service and keep sewing. So this is, again, this is the exact same method we use. This is the stuff that technicians don't want you to have. Um, and that makes me happy to say that because I feel like this is one of the things that puts the power back in your hands. Um, and again, like I said, it helps you to be intuitive and saves unnecessary um, trips to the service desk. I also want to point out the reason that I came up with this was 20, I will still be, I'm still a little traumatized by 2020 as we all are. Uh, when COVID happened, uh, we knew there would be a quarantine or whatever we were, whatever state you were in and you were in that time. And we were afraid we were going to lose our business because we we're going to have to shut down. And then the state of Georgia did not shut down. And the very next week, all of a sudden, our turnaround time went from two to three weeks to eight to 12 weeks. And it was horrible because we we were all of our time was spent checking people, machines in and getting it going. But then I was working 12 hour days, seven days a week trying to keep up. And what we kept seeing over and over again was yes, there was a lack of service. People were using sewing machines that hadn't been serviced. You're sewing multiple layers for masks, but more often than not, those machines were sitting on a shelf and they could have been resolved by fixing a user error or a minor repair. So we came up with a program called the Quick Fix. And uh, what we did was we offered um, an appointment times. So you would go onto the, the thing, you make an appointment for free and you pay $29 up front. With that $29, I took the machine in the back, spent somewhere between five and 30 minutes fixing your machine. If we fixed it, we kept your $29 and you were able to bring your machine back on appointment within the next six months and that $29 would go towards your service fee. They all needed service, trust me. Um, if we could not fix it, we did refund your money. Or if we could fix it, but not that day, we'd just put you up in our service queue. So we worked out this program to keep machines moving a lot faster. So it's the same process we did in that to keep everybody going that would keep you going, if that makes sense. Um, so like I said, it kind of meets a lot of needs. We get so many customers coming in that are new sewists. They've kind of followed the manual, but manuals are not clear anymore. It will help you build proper skills. And I don't mean just... Um, learning to thread properly is a huge thing. It's so easy to miss a step. And if you know the symptoms of what you're having, then you'll know what step you missed. It's great for people that have been sewing for 40 years. I guess a lot when I used to lecture in front of guilds with my no better, sew better lecture, it was kind of a preemptive lecture about all the things you should do before you start sewing. And I would get the eye rolls from the older ladies in the group like, well, look, I've been sewing for 40 years. You can't possibly tell me something I didn't know. But nobody had presented this material from a technician standpoint of things that are known to go wrong with your sewing machine that may or may not be your fault. So in the end, everybody said, I wish I would have taken notes, you know, while you were doing this, because there were a lot of things I didn't know. So it's even good if you've been sewing your whole life. It's really, really, really imperative for those that want to be in a machine business. I just told John and a couple people two weeks ago. If you cannot troubleshoot a machine when it comes in and your business, you are totally dead in the water. You can lose days to trying to figure out what's wrong with a machine. And if you can't figure out quickly, then your, your revenue is going down. So to me, this is extremely necessary, not a luxury. Um, and we also, from our developer that has built this platform and told us there is a phone app that's releasing very soon. I don't have a date yet. Um, you can still access all of our workshops from your phone through the browser, but this app is going to give you very quick access to get into there to, to help repair your machine. So um, I'm excited about that. We will always have a private community of people enrolled in the workshop so that you can learn from your peers. And we will always have consultation options so that if you run into an issue and you need help beyond the workshop, that we'll be there to help you. This is a quick glance into the workshop. I'm still building this part out, so it's just a small sampling, but I have it set up into two different sections. One is it um, covers troubleshooting by symptom. So let's just say you're sitting down, it's thread nesting. Um, you're going to go over here to the left in the module, and you're going to click on the section that says, you know, symptom thread nesting, and it's going to give you a very specific checklist um, of things to do in a specific order. So you can narrow down the issue. And then there's also videos to demonstrate things to you. So, you know, um, I mean, we cover everything from filing burrs on bobbin cases to the hook. Uh, it's just a whole gamut of things based on the symptom. Um, 
we set up very easy for you to go to exactly what you need. Then the second section is covers in-depth troubleshooting. This is really important if you are collecting machines or you go buy one on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap and it's it seems to be functioning, but something's not working right. It's going to give you an entire overview to figure out if you can't like pinpoint the issue, this is exactly what you would need to do. So we have it broken up into two sections all in the same workshop. All right, so this one will be a one-time fee and you have always have access to our material for life in the core lessons. Um, there's options for consultation if you can't figure it out. And this is gonna be around 99 to $150. We have no idea until we get it completely built out. But as always, we will always open it up to founding members. Now, the way that does happen, um, everybody in our Vintage Machine Workshop, because they were the true founding members, always get first access to the new releases on discount. Um, and if you would do me a favor, if you can in the comments, if this is something that um, that I'm always looking for, if you have any reoccurring issues with your machines that pop up, it doesn't matter what brand or model, how old and how new, are there things that absolutely drive you crazy? If they are, put them in the comments for me um, twofold. One is um, I would like to be able to dress it in the workshop, but also in my, my new format, of me doing lives every you know couple times a week, I want to be able to address a lot of those in these lives for free. So that really helps me um, figure out what would be beneficial to you. And this is going to um, launch probably in mid to late March. So this is very, very high on my list. The people in the vintage workshop really need it. And I think everyday people really need this. All right. So our next stop on our path is the remove your covers workshop. We did get to test this one live and in person before COVID. Um, this is the one I think most people are asking about. This is maintenance for your modern machine. It's not a service workshop. I won't teach you to adjust the timing. I'm not going to teach you to overhaul and move out, take out any sensors and put them back in. It's literally maintenance. Um, it does teach you to, like in the picture there, to remove the covers from your modern machine. You're going to clean it out, lubricate it, check your computer boards. That is number one in this workshop for computerized machines um, and keep everything in good working order. Uh, if you, We've had a lot of experience in our shop with people trying to remove our covers themselves and getting to a point of no return. And it's a huge charge for us to have to go back and first get the machine back into its original order, if we can, and then figure out what the issue is. So this avoids all those mishaps. It does replace service in most cases, but not when timing needs to be adjusted or it needs repairs. So this workshop in combination with the troubleshooting workshop makes it very powerful for you. OK, um, it's going to keep your machines going. And that's exactly what we want. I just saw in the Viking group yesterday, somebody said, um, I haven't used my Viking Sapphire 8, whatever, in seven years. Should I have it serviced? And there's so many people in there. They're like, well, I've had my machine for 20 years and haven't serviced. And that's it's been fine. The problem is, is that the dealers really don't want you to do this because it's going to wear down your machine, especially the computer boards, and you have to buy into a new machine. If um, with this workshop, you would you would just be able to do it yourself. You can do it twice a year. You can do it every month if you want, whatever meets your needs without you having to pay someone to do it. So we have two different versions of this. Um, this is difficult. Uh, this is what I've been having to sort out over the last few years. The first one we have is for the home sewist, which means for those of you that just want to maintain your machine, you're not looking to go into career or business, this is what you're going to want. It's going to take me some time, but each family of machine from the brand or model will have its own course. So for instance, if you look at Janome, Janome is all the brands are known for releasing families of machines where they're all, it's like seven models or four models. They're all almost exactly the same, except they tweaked some of the features. They're all the same as far as getting into them, cleaning them and lubricating. So we will build um, a single course for that family of machines. And it's going to teach you how to remove the covers properly without damage, how to clean, lubricate, reassemble and test so, and take care of your computer systems if it has one. Each module has a place to comment. So if you're stuck on a point, you can put a note in there and I'll, you'll get you some guidance. Um, it's on demand only for these single courses. So you, but you do have access for life. So if you invest into the one for your machine, if it's another year down the road, you can go right back to the module and it's going to walk you through the same information. The estimated cost 
per course is going to be about $69 to $200. And it really just depends. So we'll probably even go a little lower on a lot of your basic low-end machines that you buy, like at Walmart or Joann's or Amazon. There's a great need for that because most people don't feel it's ever worth taking in for service and paying $80 or $90 for it. So we'll address that. But like then you've got your really expensive Viking and Brother and Bernina machines that are going to be on the 200 end because they are so much more complex. So if this is a program that you think you are interested in, again, I would love it if you would let me know what machines you have that you think would fall into this. Because again, I do this based on popularity, what the demand is. That's partially dependent on you all. There is a survey on the front page of the Sewing Doc Academy website, but also what seems to come through the shop most frequently also determines. Um, but I would rather honor what the need is. If, if there's a whole bunch of you telling me that it's Bernina or Janome or Brother or whatever these are, then I would rather be able to focus on that. Um, so this is going to start launching in March of 2022, but it's going to continue for years because there's tens of thousands of machines out there. Um, to give you an example, this is the first one that's releasing. It is a special case. Um, this, if you've ever heard of this machine, this is a serious, serious thorn in my side. And somebody in the workshop just emailed me about this shop, this uh, machine the other day. This is what is called a Singer commercial grade machine. It is purely marketing. This is not a commercial grade machine. Um, and unfortunately, it works great as an average machine, but when you're trying to put thick things to this machine, it does not respond well. Um, more often than not, the timing on the hook slips, not at the needle bar, not at the feed, just at the hook. So with this particular machine, um, I do have a bonus in there on how to reset hook timing. There's only two uh, There's only two machines ever in the modern realm that I will teach you to reset that timing, not in a comprehensive workshop. And this is one of them because it's easier to do than most machines and it's common. Um, so to give you a look inside the workshop, this is just a snapshot. You'll see like our other workshops, all of the modules are there on the left. And then the video is in the middle or the text that you follow. The thing I want to point out, and I promise to not go off on a tangent on this, if you look at that video or the picture of that video, that gear that's being lubricated is a plastic gear, which means that this is not a commercial grade machine. So um, that's one just a, a, a thing to point out. The other machine that's like this that will teach timing is the Singer Heavy Duty, which is the gray machine uh, 4422, I think, and a 4S are usually the common numbers. So that's to give you an idea of an individual course. Now we have a second side, which is for what we call Texan training. For those of you looking to build your, your business, um, we're going to have another format. It's going to be another comprehensive workshop. So it's going to teach you to remove the covers on all plastic modern machines. Uh, and that is quite an undertaking. So um, if you're not looking to be a tech in training and you want this training, you're still eligible to come into this workshop, but not everybody wants to invest into the larger workshop. It will teach the same things, cleaning and lubrication specific to each brand and model because they are all different. We do have the private community for sorting out the issues. Um, we will probably have monthly or quarterly classes, but it's going to take building this workshop to feel what the need is. And then our enrollment fee is probably going to be around $299. Again, we'll determine that down the road. And as always, these will be discounted when we first launch the workshop. And again, I will say this over and over again, the people that are in the vintage machine workshop at the time all of these launch always get first um, dibs on the reduced rate. Um, the, we're not sure if the vintage machine workshop needs to be a prerequisite for this or not. So we will determine that down the road. But I am estimating that we will launch the comprehensive side of this in May. This is very high on my list, especially for those building their business that need to start moving into cleaning modern machines. So next on our path, we have another one that we're not certain about yet. This is the advanced vintage machine workshop. I do have a lot of people that are interested only in working on vintage machines. And I'm grateful because I can tell you right now, this morning I just talked to Paul and said we are getting probably 10 to 15 emails a week of people now asking, can I ship my vintage machine to you for restoration? Uh, our turnaround time on vintage machines right now in my shop is over a year. Uh, and that's with what we just have in the in the shop. So we're working really hard to one, build a network so we can pass these off to other people in our workshop, but also, I mean, there's clearly a demand. So we're trying really hard to focus on where the need is. Um, so this is going to depend on the demand and market. This workshop has to be filled with people from the vintage sewing machine workshop. So we don't know, are people in that workshop want to come into this one or do they want to skip ahead to the modern one when it comes out? So we're not sure about that yet. 
Um, I have two, a couple of plans for this. It is going to be a scheduled guided course for a couple of weeks. And that's because people want to learn the feed system, the timing system, the needle bar system, the hook system. So we're going to break that down into manageable segments um, and just how the machine works. Some of us are really nerdy and care and other people are like, just tell me what I need to do. Um, it would include more complex repairs than what you get in the vintage machine workshop. So not as big as gear replacement, but not as simple as just cleaning and lubrication. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, you do, we are probably going to require you to have some experience in the vintage machine workshop, not just having signed up for it. You really need to have dug your feet in a little bit, clean some machines, been in machines before you can move into this workshop. Um, and again, this is where, um, the big advantage to being in the vintage workshop right now is all of these advanced repairs. Um, I'll give you a good example here. This is um, Carrie who just, uh, we've been messaging in our private Facebook group this week. She is purchasing this FOF 1222, which is a fantastic machine. Everybody I know that has this machine is fanatical. In fact, I've had people purchase um, a parts machine online and bring both to me in hopes that we could use the parts machine to fix the main machine. And we've ended up fixing both and they go home with two working machines, but they're thrilled because they love the machine. So she said that she found it for $20 and, but it does have a cracked cam stack and needs to be um, serviced and repaired. Oh, sorry. I went too far. And, um, and I did let her know, yes, there is replacement parts available for the cam stack. So this is a much more complex thing that we would cover in the vintage machine workshop. What we're going to do is we're going to do a private session together. And since uh, I am giving her value by helping her to replace this part, but she's giving me value because that will be um, recorded and will become a module in this workshop. So everybody that's in the vintage machine workshop that has complex repairs that we can't address in the original workshop, they're going to get free lessons on the complex repairs to help us build this workshop, if that makes sense. Um, I, like I said, it's very important to me that if you're adding value to my stuff, then I need to give it back to you tenfold. That's the only way I, I'm just really big on returning what you get. So that's our community we're building. Our next workshop, um, will, and I should say, if we do build out this advanced workshop, I'm thinking this will be um, probably August-ish, depending on how much material we have. So that's just an unknown. I don't really have a date yet. Now we have another big need, which is serger maintenance. Um, we have tons of serger customers and people that call all the time, especially with sergers that are seized and won't move. It's going to be very similar to the Remove Your Covers workshop for sewing machines, but it's going to be for sergers. If you own a serger and you use one, you know that that thing produces way more lint and dust and stuff than your sewing machine does, unless you're doing, you know, fleece or flannel or something. But I have um, a young lady that's been a customer for many, many years. She owns her own clothing line and she started in her grandmother's kitchen table um, <clears throat> where people were sewing their, um, she making her swimsuits and things for her line. And she had four or five machines and they all would come in cease because she didn't have time to stop and get them, you know, bring them in for service. So that kind of inspired me years ago for this. Um, it's probably going to look a lot like the remove your covers where we'll have individual courses very for very specific brands, not as broad. I mean, um, there's not as many serger um, models as there are sewing machines. So it'll be a lot easier to offer individual courses, but we will also have the comprehensive workshop. So that's going to teach you to remove the covers on all of them, clean it out and lubricate. Um, it's not going to cover any type of timing adjustment or repairs. Sergers do need that, but I find them to be a lot more like vintage machines where it almost takes a catastrophic event for the loopers to get out of time or the machine to get out of time. So this is only going to cover the maintenance portion of that. Um, we haven't determined a fee, but it's probably going to stay in the $299 range, just like our other workshops. Um, and we're not sure of the frequency of live workshops. Again, we're going to have to build these things out and do trial and error before we can determine what that's going to look like. Um, we are going to add a troubleshooting workshop for serger specific. And I feel like that one almost is more importantly needed um, than the than the sewing machine one because sergers are such an enigma sometimes. You can do everything right, but misplace one little thread in those uh, loopers and your whole day is shot trying to figure it out. Um, our estimated launch for this one is September 2022. So obviously the sewing machine one is extremely vital because I need to get that out for people on their career path. But this is really close behind because um, there are so many sergers sitting in closets right now simply because they need to be cleaned out and lubricated. 
So the last stop on our path for this segment is the Comprehensive Modern Machine Workshop. This is the big one that everybody has been asking about. It is definitely geared for Texan training. It will be available to home sewists that really, really want to learn full service and repair. I do get people that live out in rural areas that don't have service options, that can't do anything um, with their machines. They have to drive a day or two to get to somewhere and then, you know, wait it out. So it will be available, but I'm not sure how many people will want to go into this and aren't looking to build a business. It covers both mechanical and computerized machines of all brands. I will be um, very transparent that I do not teach proprietary material. Everything that I teach in this and all my workshops are the same things I use in my business before I was ever factory trained. So it's only been in the last few years I became factory trained for Brother, Viking, and Janome. And that's because I was associated with a dealer. Um, but my entire business was built before being associated with a dealer. And I am no longer associated with a dealer. So I don't even use that part of my training. So I do not teach you the code to get into your Viking and mess around in the service menu. I don't teach you any of that stuff. I have no rights to. Um, and honestly, I feel like that has the opportunity to make things worse. So I like to be very transparent, though. Everything that you learn here, though, you can build an entire business off of without being associated with a dealer. If you're anything like me, I actually hated being associated with a dealer. My job is to save machines and keep them going. And a dealer's job is to sell machines. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible matchup. Um, our goals and uh, what we aim to do is very different. Um, it's going to be very structured. This one is probably the only one that will be so strictly structured. Um, it's going to be a guided course with weekly lessons. So it'll still work around your schedule. If you have to work full time and do this, if you have a very odd schedule, it's still doable. But it's not going to be where you just get into the workshop and you have access to everything. Um, it's going to be live. Um, so there will be a live lesson every week that will be recorded for replay. Then you're going to get um, text. There will be workbooks to do. Um, one other thing we're adding is we will be shipping a sewing machine to everyone in this workshop for each cohort. Um, and initially, because everyone needs to learn on the exact same machine at the same time, we're actually probably going to do two machines. One is going to be mechanical to start with. Um, all the shipping costs and everything will be built into it. So we'll ship you the machine. When you're done with that part, you will package it back up and ship it to us. And we will ship you a computerized machine so that you're learning on both machines with everybody all together. I thought about all the ways to do this and for have everybody in the room with a different machine would be a nightmare. So what we're gonna do is spend eight weeks going through those two machines and then the remaining three or four weeks, whatever we need will be in-depth training outside of those two machines to get you prepared. So that's what that's going to look like. Um, it will always have lifetime access to learning modules and material. <clears throat> we always have the private community. This one's going to be different because you will actually have tech support for, we're not sure for how long, but before you have to start paying additionally. But while you're getting your legs under you and learning this, I feel like it's important that you do have support. So that if you need to call me in an emergency or um, one of us a specialist, then you're going to have support and that hand on your shoulder of like, you're not messing up the machine. Let's just walk through this. Um, the vintage machine workshop is going to have to be a prerequisite or you're going to have to purchase the workshop together. Obviously, my preference is that you have been through the vintage machine workshop, which means you're comfortable and familiar with being inside the machine already because your nerves are going to have to be in place to get into plastic machines, which is a whole different ballgame. Um, if you choose not to go down the vintage machine workshop path first, you will have to at least purchase it because we refer a lot of our material back into the Vintage Machine Workshop. Um, I have to, to figure out ways to make it efficient because this is a lot of workshops and a lot of people. The enrollment fee for founding members will probably be around $1,500 for at least two runs of the workshop. And that's because it helps us get the flow, make sure that we're covering all our bases, work out the kinks. And then this will eventually probably be closer to a $4,000 workshop when it's fully complete, which in my opinion is still a bargain for everything that you're learning in this workshop. You can build an entire business off this and the Vantage Machine Workshop. Um, so enrollment is going to open probably November and December, and our first cohort is going to launch in the first quarter of January. Then we will take a few weeks off and we will have a second um, founding member cohort just to make sure we've refined everything. So make sure that's on your radar. Again, that's probably going to, for the founding members, it's going to launch around the $1,500 range, if I had to guess. A lot of that cost variance is, has depends on our, um, the technology on the back end that I have to invest into.
So that's what we're looking at for 2022. I do want to tell you, I'm not going to go into detail, but this is what we're looking at for 2023 and beyond to round out what we offer. Um, we have surger service and repair, which will teach timing and repairs to sergers. Um, advanced repair for modern machines. So once you go through the um, the comprehensive workshop, we'll get into replacing stepper motors and replacing parts and other things that I can teach you. Um, embroidery machine service is going to be a huge one, learning how to embroidery and, um, and recalibrate uh, embroidery machines. Embroidery machine troubleshooting, which is different than machine troubleshooting. Um, I have a couple embroiderer experts that we want to bring in to help us with that. Uh, free motion quilting troubleshooting, which I know seems silly, but I am a free motion quilter. That's my first love. Um, you, if you've taken a class with an instructor with your guild or online, there's there's not a lot of knowledge out there on the machine side and how you can improve things. So we're going to go through an entire troubleshooting workshop for that. Um, upright and multi-needle machine maintenance and service. That's probably coming I would say 2024 for this one and the next one. Um, this is a big undertaking as well, but there's a huge need. People do not like lugging around their upright embroidery machines, and I can't blame you. Um, and it's getting to be extremely expensive to keep those maintained. So we'll be adding that. We will add long arm maintenance and service again later, probably 2024. Um, gear replacement and touch and sews, merits, Athena's, um, all of those will come in 2024. And then the Viking 6000 series, which you've all heard me talk about numerous times. Um, the buttonhole mechanisms and stitch length has to come out of those machines. It's very complex. Um, and I'm not sure how we're going to approach that one yet, but that's going to be later. Now, I do want to give you a workshop cost because people ask, if I'm going to learn how to do this, what am I looking at so I can plan ahead? I'm going to give you two different scenarios. So if you have, if you are a current student or becoming one in the vintage sewing machine workshop in the next probably three weeks, your vintage sewing machine cost right now is $249. The motor workshop is zero when you enroll. <clears throat> your troubleshooting workshop, you would get, if you're in the vintage machine workshop, you're going to get first chance at being the founding member for the troubleshooting workshop, which is going to be $69 for you, give or take. Then you'll have first offering as a founding member of the Remove Your Covers workshop. So the comprehensive one, you're looking at 159. Then you're gonna get first offering at the comprehensive workshop, the big, big, big one for 1500. All right, that's a total cost of less than $2,000 to invest into your education to build your business. If you look at the other scenario for the people that are coming in way late and paying full price um, without the options of the, um, the founding members, you're looking at $600 you know, maybe a little less. I'm not sure the timeline for the vintage sewing machine workshop. For the motor workshop, it'll be 169 full retail. For troubleshooting, um, 159. For the remove your covers, 299. The comprehensive, probably 3,500. And you're looking at still less than $5,000, but you can see the vast difference. So again, I'm not trying to push my workshops on you. I just want to make sure you understand for everybody that's learning their skills right now, you're going to continue to invest into the workshops at a lower level than those that are going to get a late start. So I have, um, what I'm going to do, let me stop sharing my screen here. If I can figure this out. Okay. Um, so that's a comprehensive overlook. I know it's a lot of material to uh, uh, digest and observe and, and figure out. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, so I have a handout here. It's basically an overview of everything I gave you. This is a nice little reference sheet. So you have an idea of what each workshop is that I covered and our release date that we're looking at. Um, but what I'm doing um, also is, so this is my notes from, from the slides I just presented. So I'm going to also include my slides so you don't have to keep going back. And if you're curious about the cost and want to look at things, I don't want to make you have to go back and watch this video over and over again. So um, if you would really like to have the handouts and stuff, I'm not putting these up on the website right now like we did for January. We're doing a whole lot of moving around. So these will get messaged to you if you're in Facebook. If you are on YouTube, then I am going to um, have to email them to you. So just drop your email address if you're watching on YouTube. So you'll get both of these. Um, and if there's any questions, let me see what I can see this morning. Uh, I see a few comments here. <clears throat> and if you have any questions after this that come up, please just message me on Facebook um, or email me. It's all, we're all over the website, Sewing Doc Academy. You can sign up for um, the workshops there. Um, oh, Patty. Patty just said she's joining for recovery, had an ankle surgery. I wish you well, Patty. I missed you. I did get your message. Oh, I hate to hear that. I have your order going out too. <laughs> um, 
let's see. Christy says some of them only care about making more bucks. Yes, this is exactly it. And I, like I said, I'm not here to shame dealers or, or group. I hate group shaming. I hate shaming period. Um, but it's been my experience. Like I said, it's a purely a business model. It's kind of like when we talk about vintage machines and why you can take it into a service shop or a dealer and they're like, you know, we can't get parts. They're not necessarily lying to you, but it's not their business model. It is not cost effective. I can tell you to do restoration where you have overhead like I have. Um, you know, my rent, I have to pay rent. So um, for some people, they don't have a technician on staff that can solely deal with things. So it's just a different business model. But I do think, I know that we've all had our experiences with um, unethical dealers before. So um, thank you, Patricia. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. All you guys, and Annette, I see you too. So I will definitely get these handouts to you guys and I will go back through the comments and see if there's any questions that um, I can't see on my screen here. Um, if anybody has any feedback on how well our stream was today, that's also appreciated. We're just trying to refine our whole process. So in the meantime, I like I said, I'm not gonna do a full long weekly presentation. I did manage to hit an hour, go figure, um, uh, every week. But what I'm gonna do is break these down into much smaller segments and we're gonna get back into dealing with machine issues and helping you resolve issues and good tidbits. And that's just probably gonna be Monday, Wednesday and Friday starting next week. So thank you all. If you have any questions, you know where I am. I appreciate spending time with you guys. Bye.